Hello, spooky friends. Welcome to another episode of Dairyland Frights, a paranormal podcast that covers everything spooky, creepy, and mysterious in the Midwest. So let's get to the spookiness, right, ladies? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Brooke and Megan, you like the zoo? <laughs> Love the zoo, John. Love the zoo. <laughs> I will Megan? never outgrow the zoo. It is a great never place. Never outgrow to be. the zoo. Yes. Right? See the little chimps and the monkeys, and they're all having a little fun. They're so cute, the little ground dog. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> right? Ooh, exactly. Little cubs. Little bear cubs. Aww, that's how John like sounds at the zoo. <laughs> I do sound like that. Oh my god, it's so cute. It's so cute. I tap on the window. Hi, you cute. Um <laughs> But this zoo <laughs> is spooky as hell. Ooh. So oh, no. we are you love this. I mean, this blew me away. Thanks, Brooke, for putting it on your list of what to cover. This is yeah. awesome. So we're going to stay in Illinois again for this creepy tale. Last week, Dairyland Frights investigated Bachelors Grove Cemetery. This week, we investigate the Lincoln Park Zoo. So let me get right into it. I- I'm going to get the boring stuff out of the way, like we always say. So it is, <laughs> this is great. Again, just like the Bachelors Grove, it's located... I believe like 25 minutes or miles or what away from Chicago, Lincoln Park Zoo. And if you're listening to this, you're in Illinois, you've gone to this park because it's one of the largest parks in um, Illinois, if not, well, Chicago. And, but it once was a cemetery. Of course. (laughs) Of course. And this is a great fact. I love this fact. Again, 1800s. Um, (laughs) The Chicago City Cemetery, that's what it was called before Lincoln Park was open from 1843 to 1859 and held the remains, now hold on to your butts, of more than <laughs> 35,000 people. Wow. How, that's okay? crazy. That's a lot of people. <laughs> that's a lot of people. So stories say that as many, hold on to your butts, as many as 12 to 15,000 Bodies still remain under the zoo. Oh wow. God! That's you said this was... Soak that in for a second. <laughs> Soak that in. What do you, What do you think, Brock? I, I was gonna say you. You said this is the boring part. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, Megan, what do you think? Yeah, a lot of bodies. Oh, I'm I... sorry, Brooke. Go on. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say that's a lot of bodies. I yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Megan, I want to know like where did the rest of them go? If there's that's only true. fifteen thousand, like tell. were they exhumed? <laughs> I will tell you and you won't like it. Oh, (laughs) boy. So what is the haunting, which they blame, the most of the hauntings take there is because of these bodies. Um, Except for there is a, and I'll get into a little bit of this in the history, bite-sized history, which I call it this week. (laughs) Except for there's a limestone couch memorial crypt, which still stands at the south end of Lincoln Park. I have a picture of it. You can cheat and scroll down, Megan and Brooke, to take a look at it. It is a beautiful mausoleum, but it's in a park. And it's on the edge of the park. Hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. So, Spooky. let's get to our sources. My sources today, American Ghost Walks. Um, they actually did an EVP session there that I will talk about later. Excellent. A uh, website called Chicago Life. Uh, a lady, um, well, basically, she did a whole bunch of cool stuff there, which I'll get to. Lincoln Park Zoo website, which, by the way, does not mention there's bodies underneath <laughs> the zoo. They have all these cute little <laughs> things you can take the kids. It's a and bonus, then, yes. Exactly. Reddit. Uh, so, <clears throat> like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the history of Lincoln Park because we are a spooky podcast, right, ladies? So oh, I'm heck sure yeah. you're, you're listening and you're saying, get to the scary stuff. Come on, man, right? <laughs> so this is what I looked up. What is Lincoln Park known for? And this is hilarious. You, when, when I read this, you'll be like, you forgot something. Um, Lincoln Park is home to two great museums, a free zoo, and many historic landmarks and buildings. Public art featured in the park includes 17 monuments, four fountains, and an array of modern art and antiquities. Oh, so um, nice. You forgot something. <laughs> Mm. 12,000 bodies and graves underneath <laughs> this park. I'm just saying. That's insane. 
Right. Okay. So here's the bite size history of the park. In 1860, uh, Lake Park, earlier Cemetery Park, duh. <laughs> Uh, the precursor of today's park was established by the city on the lands just north of the city's burial ground. I'm like, okay. Five years later, there's like graves all over the place, like Mackinac <laughs> Island. Mm -hmm. uh, check that out. Uh, five years later, on June 12, 1865, the park was renamed by my favorite president, Abraham Lincoln. Nice. So, mm. so it is added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1994. Part of the oldest section of today's Lincoln Park is near North Avenue. I don't know where that is, but if you're listening to this and you're in Illinois and Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. Its existence as the city cemetery in 1843, that was subdivided into a potter's field, a Catholic cemetery, a Jewish cemetery, and a general city cemetery. <laughs> There's a cemetery the for theme. everybody. <laughs> you get the theme, right? These cemeteries were the only cemeteries in the Chicago area until 1859. Oh, which that would make okay. sense. Yeah. That's mm. why so there's so 18... many people there. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. In 1852, David Kennison, who is said to have born, uh, been born in 1736, was buried in the city cemetery. I guess he's a big dude. I don't know. Um, <laughs> another notable barrier in the cemetery was Chicago Mayor James Curtis. <laughs> this is, I love it. Great 1800 stuff. They lost his body. Okay, of course. <laughs> and then they found it. Oh, good. <laughs> where did we put that dead body again? I don't know, Megan. <laughs> you know where we put it? Uh, Brooke, no, you know where we put the dead body? <laughs> No. Yeah, we'll find okay. it. It'll turn up. We'll find. We'll turn yeah. up. We'll turn up. We'll turn up. Uh, so, <laughs> throughout the late 1850s, there was a discussion of closing the cemetery or abandoning it because of health concerns. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> so, in the fall of 1858, Dr. John H. Rausch, M.D., suggested that the burial grounds were a health risk, which might <laughs> serve might serve extremely well for plantations or a grove of forest trees. So his thing was this this place is like, do you no, let's let's deep six this place, get rid of it, <laughs> and let's play in a forest. Right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um so the idea was dropped during the Civil War. And I didn't know this. Um so <laughs> But revived again after the war ended. Uh, but in 1864, the city council decided to add all of the 120 acres, right? Cemetery. <laughs> Think about that. 120 acres of cemetery uh, lands north of uh, North Avenue again to the park by relocating the grave. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the cemetery sections south of North Avenue were also relocated, but the land was left for, get this, residential development to this day. <laughs> what the heck? And I will get into a story, uh, a couple of stories about, yeah. <laughs> Your, uh, it's like poltergeist. <laughs> we didn't move the bodies, but we moved the graves kind of thing. Right, of right. course, yeah. Um, so to this day, like I said, the couch, couch, yeah, mausoleum can still be seen the most visible reminder of the history as a cemetery standing amidst, amidst the trees behind the Chicago History Museum. So, uh, pretty nice mausoleum, right? As mausoleums go. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looks really looks nice. nice. I'm definitely going to get one. So, yeah, I would love um, a mausoleum. Yeah, for yeah, sure. We'll have mausoleums next to each other. We'll have bear slayer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Slayer. It could be like our clubhouse. Damn yeah. Right. Damn clubhouse. Right. <laughs> so, we're dead people. One other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one other really quick thing here is another large and notable group of graves relocated from the site of today's Lincoln Park with those of, get this, <laughs> approximately four thousand confederate prisoners of war who died at camp douglas oh so camp douglas which we should cover um down the road it's very haunted um <laughs> interesting many prisoners perished between 1862 and 1865 as as a result of poor condition they were then taken um on 
or off the battlefield and disease and everything like that. And they were put in a federal prison where this Camp Douglas is. Um, Although the camp was located south of downtown Chicago, which is interesting, near the stockyard. So I don't know if you guys have, Brooke, Megan, have you been to Chicago recently? I have, but I'm not good with directions. (laughs) Okay. All right. Megan? Uh, Not recently. No Chicago at all? The the driving down there stresses me out. (laughs) <laughs> Does, yeah. Last, yeah, yeah last time we went through there brooke drove and that was nice <laughs> oh yeah that's right <laughs> well next time we do an investigation there we will be in the hearse we already yeah that's that. right our, and, our, and, our and, right. Hearse, yeah can you imagine you know you call up like a car rental company you're like uh oh, not not looking for a small car not an suv i'm looking for a hearse <laughs> you got one of those specifically um... yeah absolutely absolutely so Today, their grave sites may be found at Oakwood Cemetery in the southern part of Chicago. It's a one acre, think about this, mass grave and a monument erected by Southerners and Chicago friends in 1895, 1895, excuse me, to memorialize these Southerners whose earthly remnants remain in the north. <laughs> in the north. So it's basically like, we got to. You know, these good old boys got to remember they fall for the town. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> good old okay. boy. Let's... Civil War. Uh, yeah. uh, anyway. You lost. Get over so... it. <laughs> Damn, Yankees. <laughs> um, anyway. All right. So author George Levy believes that. I just love all this stuff. Believes that remains of many of the Confederate prisoners are still found beneath what are currently... And guess what? Um, didn't your husband Megan just play baseball recently or softball? Yeah, baseball and softball. Okay. Uh, imagine he is now playing under the graves of <laughs> thousands of Confederate soldiers. <laughs> that would make it more interesting, I That's... think. <laughs> no, Brooke. What if he brings home one of those ghosties? <laughs> Not in my house. Not and in then, my like, house. I... Like I said, an estimated, and these numbers are all over the place. You're going to be like, hey, John, you just said 15. Now you're saying 18, and nobody really knows other than there's a lot. (laughs) An estimated of 35,000 people total were buried in this park. So remember, I was like 12 to 15, and then Mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff. (laughs) So the cemetery was almost destroyed in the, guess what? The Great Fire. Of course. That makes sense. But the Pesco fire was worse. It was. Right it up. was worse. <laughs> we have we an have episode whole, on that. A whole episode about it. <laughs> yeah, so check out that episode, Chicago Fire, whatever, you win. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they had these headboard winter, uh, wooden markers that were you know, designed for burials of that day. Of course, they reduced the ash and conflagration. That means they're ash. Um, <laughs> so re- rendering plot after plot impossible to identify so mm. the, the fire mm. swept through and it's like who's buried here again like, right so with no right so with no ways to discern where the myriad of burials remain the city i love this the city simply continued to plans to create a lakefront park and 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 chicago moved on hmm. but not all the dead however, dun 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 <laughs> So they left the bodies, in other words. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> so after uh, this, uh, uh, Pamela Banos, Banos, she's an artist and scholar. She, I was just like reading a little bit about her and what she did. She did a whole big thing on this to try to figure out what's going on. <laughs> like, what? Right? Are there still bodies here and everything? Oh, yeah. She found out quite a bit. So after years, Pamela found out after painstaking research, she determined that as many as 15,000 bodies may remain in Lincoln Park today. Under the zoo, under the ball fields, the grounds of the Chicago History Museum, and even the posh homes of the Go Coat mm-hmm. land south of North Avenue. So wow. all these posh homes, and I'll get into a couple of stories, kind of funny. Or a story, I should say, about people finding things they should not find. Um, 
and also was home to Archdiocese Cemetery, concurrent with the city cemetery's time there. So again, remember I said there's a Jewish cemetery, a Catholic cemetery, all these different cemeteries. Tons of bones, right? Now, this is a funny story from her. So Pamela, uh, she said that she had a cousin um, that was working um, on what I believe the properties of mansions. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and uh, he's a retired sheet medical work, uh, sheet metal worker was working on this. And he, he would tell her like, these strange tales of bones often found in the properties of these mansions off of Astor Street, Dearborn Street, and other blocks. So, <laughs> so they would be digging and, you know, doing whatever they're doing, you know, and finding just skeleton bones everywhere. And uh, these are really, really nice homes there. And the wor- <laughs> so the workers kept close uh, this business card of a local shaman. <laughs> Oh. who they would call to collect the bones and re-enter them in the hopes that their owners would not wander the earth after the disruption <laughs> of their graves. <laughs> Makes sense. Right. Uh, would, so they have a card of a shaman. Would you guys they, be yeah. like ticked if your bones were like uprooted and moved? Oh. Or would you be like, yeah. you know what, whatever. Um, I guess it depends on where they moved me to and where they moved me from. <laughs> Under the ballpark. Yeah, if I, if I ended up under a baseball field, I'd be a little mad. <laughs> I don't even like nice. baseball. I don't even like baseball. If you put me under a basketball court, I'd be like, that's fine. <laughs> under the Bucks stadium. Yeah. You know. Bury me under Pfizer Forum, please. <laughs> put it in your will. <laughs> so Brooke would come as a ghost and like trip all the people running yeah. second base. She'd like stick her ghost foot out. And- like, <laughs> Brooke, Megan, how about you? Brooke's a menace. Would that ghost. bother you being I am, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of with Brooke. It's like, at least put me somewhere entertaining that I can, like, haunt in a fun way. Right? <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Like, if I'm going to be dead, you. I'm going to have fun with it. Exactly. Absolutely. That's, that's my motto. <laughs> a zoo, though, I would be okay with that. Yeah, I would love to haunt a zoo. So maybe not everyone's <laughs> ticked yeah, about like cute little lion yeah (laughs) um anyway so (laughs) let's get to the spooky occurrences right yes so uh so some of the eerie occurrences at the zoo including ghosts wearing victoria era clothing where have we heard this before right (laughs) uh wandering through the park they appear out of nowhere and disappear quickly now that to me is spooky isn't it like you're just la 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 just boom right (laughs) And just they like vanish. little kids walking around with their corn dogs, and this like lady in like a Victorian dress is just like floating around. <laughs> mommy, mommy, look! Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Now this isn't like the lady in black, you know, not like the Galena thing, but kind of. Um, so one of the ghostly women is usually spotted near the lion house, walking around oblivious <laughs> to visitors passing by. Um. The exact ghost has also been seen in the ladies' restroom near the exhibit. So, like, imagine uh, you're in the you're in the ladies' restroom, and let's be honest, you're pretty much vulnerable, right? <laughs> and this lady just pops right into your stall. Oh my god, I'd be so annoyed. <laughs> Is this stall taken? <laughs> you gotta knock next things? time, lady. Occupado. <laughs> Occupado. Um, <laughs> Her reflection can be seen in the mirror. So imagine Megan mm. and Brooke, you're doing your hair. <laughs> At the and zoo. all of a sudden, boom! Oh, that's like another one of my worst fears is seeing a face in the mirror behind me. Oh, <sighs> that'd be a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Only to disappear when the person turns around. Oh, of course. That's the worst. So flickering lights and doors slamming alone have been reported in the zoo. So it's, it's your haunt, typical right? haunted stuff. Yeah. Your typical. Mm-hmm. So. Lester Fisher, former Lincoln Park Zoo director, that while digging up the foundation of the zoo's barn in 1962, workers uncovered a skeleton in a casket. Mm. Oops. And (laughs) after getting no... (laughs) I'm sorry I'm laughing, but this is hilarious. After getting no answer regarding what to do with it, so it's (laughs) like you call the city, right? Hey, uh... a skeleton. Mayor? Yeah. (laughs) 
what do we do with this casket and skeleton? <laughs> and they're like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Megan, what do we do with this casket and skeleton? You're the mayor. What do we do? <laughs> oh my god, I don't even know. I'd be like, put that back. <laughs> like, <laughs> dig a hole, put it back. You didn't see anything. I love it. <laughs> Brooke, you're the mayor. Uh, Come on, what are you gonna do? Yeah, uh, what are I we mean, doing? I, I agree. Or like, I don't know. All right, put it back. Cast it into the okay. into the Mississippi River. I don't know. <laughs> like Viking style. <laughs> yeah. Or in back. Lake Michigan. Yeah, you know, it's it's Chicago. There's mm. there's worse things in Lake Michigan, honestly. So you are both right, <laughs> actually. It was reburied and the foundation was poured on top mm, of it. Oh, that's worse. So you, <laughs> you're right. You're both right. Yeah. Um, so in 1998, which amid the construction of a parking garage in Lincoln Park, the remains of oh my god, 81 people were found along with one iron coffin. Iron coffin. That's was, a- that's metal, yeah. literally. Yeah. Wow, that is metal. <laughs> See, but, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Iron coffin for me. Um, an expensive but popular casket in the 19th century. So someone was rich, in other words, that was buried in there. Just the Iron coffin perfectly preserved the contained body. <laughs> so they opened it up. Oh, no. It was airtight. Oh, no. So the, the, uh, they have no inhibitions. Right, 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 but but the coffin was sheared during construction, immediately <laughs> decomposing the body. So, in other words, if you're buried in an iron coffin, it's sealed tight, and these idiots <laughs> sheared it and then ruined the body, Ew. you know, because people could have studied it, oh, you know, and no. been like, Oh, how did this person die? or or maybe call the call, you know, you could with DNA now, you could call. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, Megan Brooke, I found your great 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 grandpa. <laughs> what do you want to do? While <laughs> digging the zoo. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, <laughs> one of the things it said, uh, this goes back to our last episode with Van Meter Visitor, it released a putrid odor. Yeah, we, really? We, we a hate body from the 1800s. <laughs> That's crazy. I can't believe it would smell bad. <laughs> uh... So, after. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm saying the people hate their putrid or- odors. Luckily, no one's it sounds like no one started shooting like they did in the last yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you notice there's no um, like body spray that says putrid. <laughs> <laughs> there might be. <laughs> let's, let's not make We're that, Brooke. Mm, yeah, I don't know about that. After <laughs> <laughs> much beyond. Buying a new coffin plot for, for the last So I'm going to give some applause or some cheering to that person because that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. He, he bought a new casket, a new plot. You didn't have to do that. So I think mean, that's really cool. Anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. Might have avoided a perpetual haunting. That is true. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Smart dude. Fog wild nights of ghost hunting at Lincoln Park Zoo from the <laughs> website American Ghost Walks, which, by the way, I'm going to reach out to this dude because he seems really interesting. Um, have him as a guest, possibly. So, <clears throat> these are the two of the most haunted areas at Lincoln Park Zoo. The first one, the Lion House. Okay, so anecdotes collected from the zoo. Staff confirmed that staff members have also experienced encounters here, especially hearing a man's voice commanding, get out. Mm, nice. Oh, Excellent. Interesting. Amazingly, at the Lion House. Yeah, at the Lion okay. House. Correct. Amazingly, when this gentleman set up his laptop and began to record an EV, EVP, which we would not do that. We'll have something else. <laughs> Within a minute, he says, he picked up a stern male voice warning, get out. There's a woman here. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I don't know. Huh. I don't know. There's a woman with them. They're making out. I don't know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> Interesting. Uh, he's you know, trying to be a gentleman, I guess. Yeah. Uh, what if he's a, uh, what and, if like they're trying to war, they're in the lion house. What if they're worried that people are going to get eaten by lions? So they're, it's like a warning, uh, like, get out of here. There's lions here. You idiot. 
you know? That could be. You know. <laughs> okay. I, I agree. Um, <laughs> a future visit by Medium confirmed that one of the male spirits had taken on the task of keeping med, keeping men, excuse me, dead and alive out of the women's west, restroom. <laughs> oh, what a stand-up guy. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Get out of the woman's restroom. Hey, all right, man. <laughs> Okay, I'll leave. Damn. So I can't follow you. If we do, if we ever go to this park, remind me not to follow you two into the women's restroom for an EVP (laughs) session. (laughs) Although maybe I should. What do you think? (laughs) That that might. I mean, that might make him mad and get to yell at you. So yeah, so get out. Right. Oh. Okay. So (laughs) I don't do that normally. By the way, I'm not a weirdo. Um, I swear. I swear. Thanks, Megan, for backing me up. <laughs> I support um, you, John. <laughs> thank you. Um, as we continued our investigation, I played back time, so he's doing all this stuff, and he found that one of the male entities was a bit angry that I wasn't paying as much attention to him as the area I was photographing, because he clearly says, "Will you look at me?" <laughs> <laughs> Just me like as that. a ghost, yeah. <laughs> right. Pay attention to me. Whoa, take it easy. <laughs> I want attention. <laughs> so, I asked if there right? Who remained in the spot? And now, with a tinge of sadness, entered. Help me with leaving. Oh, oh. That's sad. Yeah, so when I asked if there's anything the spirits wanted to tell us about their time on Earth, and one can make out the sound of a lion's roar <laughs> and the same voice saying, I miss it. Oh. Aww. That's, That's sad. Kind of sad ghosts. Yeah. So after several hours of research and experiment, we decided to call, call a night and began to disable and back up our equipment. This is great. We are definitely doing this. So um, remember this. I will remind everyone to do this on our small team when we do investigations. So I would say that generally when an investigator ends up, this is what his feeling is, in an investigation and says goodbye before turning off his, before turning off the recording device, the entities tend to scramble to say more especially oh. to give more pleas for help. Mm-hmm. Not so in this case, or, or I should say, yeah, not so in this case of this location. At least one of the entities were eager to see us go. <laughs> mm-hmm. In response to my invitation, is there anything else, this is what he said, is there anything else you would like to say before we go? The sound of Perhaps anxious footfalls can be heard. So you hear like somebody walking towards them. <laughs> Along with the words, turn out the light. Good night. <laughs> okay, damn. It's like I'll leave. <laughs> I love the idea of a ghost like sprinting over to him and being like, turn off the light before you leave. <laughs> yeah, what the hell Why? are you trying to do? They're setting their ways. Ghost. Yeah. As a dad ghost, by the way, I say that to my kids all the time. <laughs> turn um, off the light. <laughs> so the second one is the primate house. Oh, nice. So Love to monkeys. the lion house and the primate house. So later that evening, he sat on the floor. Or I sat on the floor against the wall recording with my laptop again and softly asking questions of enti- enti- entities, which might be present, asking how many are here. I received the answer, many like me. <laughs> There you go. What does that mean? <laughs> like, why? And, <laughs> and awesome. we're all here. Every now, entity? <laughs> I don't care. The, the first one, many like me. Um, <laughs> okay, that's that's not, that's kind of scary, but how would you like to be listening to your headphones, Brooke or Megan, and hear, we're all here? That would freak me out, honestly. You- Damn like, right. Yeah. Who is me here? Too. You would oh. see me running for that door. <laughs> like, well, I'm going to pack up. Yep. See ya. I'm out. I'm getting a hot dog <laughs> and a beer. See ya. <laughs> um, so 
I then ask, are you an animal or a keeper? In response, <laughs> a male voice with an Australian accent. Who cares, mate? I added the mate. Um, who cares? Who cares? That's my best Australian accent. Brooke, you got an Australian accent. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so bad at accents. Megan? Who cares? I can't even do it. Megan? Australian. Oh, what, what would that be like? Like, Hey, mate. Hey, mate. Good day. Trip on the Bobby. Oh, God. <laughs> They're going to hate us. We just lost all our Australian listeners. We lost our Australian. Sorry, Sorry Australia. <laughs> Uh, terrible. I We're only it. good at our youper accents. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, John hey. Hey, hey, there, Watch hey. out for the air on the air on the way home. Yeah, yeah, come over <laughs> for a grill. Um, <laughs> so, in response, a male voice, like I said, I already said, who cares? When asked if there's uh, blah blah blah, sorry, when I lost my place the first thing, when I asked if there were any animals or humans from another country, okay, a voice responded. I've been to so many places. Well, mm. intelligent spirits, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cultured, yeah, <laughs> fancy pants. Um, so this particular clip is an example of an entity using an investigator's voice to create words, as the voice sounds like mine. So mm. don't Ooh. tell me you both wouldn't be freaked out if all of a sudden you heard your voice in the headphones saying. One of these lines that'd be right? very weird yeah i've never yeah. heard of that before that's interesting there's that... actually not to go off on a, a no, tangent but i there's um i remember hearing a story about some people going on a investigation i think at bobby Mackey's, and mm. they it, there was like a group of 10 of them and at one point they heard like one of the people's who was on the the investigation they heard one of their voices like screaming for help in another room and then they went there and like she was nowhere to be seen she was actually in like a totally different spot so it's very interesting i feel like it's really creepy when ghosts mm-hmm. like mimic people's voices it's like kind of kind of creepy but it definitely happens huh i'd yeah. love to learn more about that. that's so interesting yeah. yeah we will definitely cover evps one of these days and play some um there's mm-hmm. some pretty, pretty good ones out there but of yeah. course with unnatural rhythm common to an EVP. So, in other words, it kind of sounds sometimes a little sing songy, like who right. are we? You know, kind of hey, but you know what I mean. And you're like, what the mm-hmm. hell? Is going on? Mm-hmm. Um, so, very interestingly, another voice mentioned Julie, the events manager at the park, who was with us that night. We had all been very, very busy, uh, according to him, that that spring. But Julie was eager to set up another investigation. So, hey, let's get a hold of Julie, right? Yeah, right she's in school. Yeah. yeah, I like Julie. I like Julie. She's cool. She's um, cool. Hopefully she's still there. Um, so that we could add more material to the zoo ghost tour that fall. So again, this is from American Ghost Walks, um, and they they were doing this. So thanks to her efforts, we finally got everyone together on schedule. Awesome, Julie, you're doing an awesome job, Julie. Um, <laughs> the entities in the prime primate house knew it had been hard to coordinate because when I asked, <laughs> this is hilarious. Are you glad we are here? A voice says, I love it. Julie caught ya. <laughs> oh, wow. Right? That's, That's awesome. That's interesting, yeah. So, of course, in all locations investigating, there was the possibility that entities were attached to the bodies who had been interred at the city cemetery, which formerly stood here. During one of the investigations, Dave Olson, which is one of their dudes, I guess, and the Chicago Paranormal Investigators asked, are you part of the cemetery that was here? So they're still doing EVPs. These are all EVPs, by the way. Um, A male voice answered, yes, I was. The team also picked up another hire, possibly a child's voice, Megan. I'm looking at you. (laughs) um, Which says, he's talking over us. Oh, that's a mad. sassy little kid, right? Sassy. So, before I get into uh, a Reddit story about this, what what do you guys thought? You know, what what do you think? I mean, it's interesting that it sounds like these EVP responses are like very consistently intelligent. It's like correct. 
it's pretty rare that that happens with like consistency. Sometimes it's just like they say random crap or they won't say mm-hmm. anything. And then they yeah. say something like hours later or something like that. So, right. Yeah. It's really interesting. And, I love and, EVPs. Yeah. And, bro, yeah. you know, we, we, and I think Megan, uh, you've probably watched this too with uh, Sean and Ryan when they're at uh, BuzzFeed and everything like that, mm-hmm. where they pick up, you know, where it'd be like, I'm dead or get mm-hmm. out or, uh, go away. These are more intelligent, like you said, Brooke. These are like yeah. giving more deeper answers. Like I miss it, or get out, or you know, yeah. turn off the light. That's interesting. Yeah, saying mentioning Julie by name. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Megan, like, what do you think? That's Thought. crazy. I I think it'd be really interesting. Like with so many potential spirits around it's like how do you distinguish between all the different Mm -hmm. spirits that are trying to come forward like i'm sure that'd be really hard Mm -hmm. it's like you don't really know who you're surrounding yourself with because it could be a kid it could be a grandma or grandpa you just never know Mm -hmm. could be a confederate soldier i mean could be yeah you have no idea Mm -hmm. idea. um so let me ask you this are you sold this place is haunted and if you say no you're wrong. Right. That's your <laughs> so it's not really a question. So it's not really a I'm... question. Fair <laughs> statement. I'm pretty sold. I mean, it's pretty crazy. It's I'm interesting on. that it's just like, oh, the monkey house is haunted. And the lion house. <laughs> like, yeah, very lion particular. House. Uh-huh. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Megan? Yeah. I feel like with so much, like, paranormal energy going on, there's, like, literally Hell no yeah. way it can't be haunted to some extent. Yeah, Hell you yeah. can't build a something on top of fifteen thousand bodies and Hell have it not yeah. be haunted. <laughs> Come on, yeah, right. Okay, anything else to quickly add to before I get to my mildly scary tales of Reddit? <laughs> not too <laughs> scary, but mildly scary. No, I'm excited for this. Let's let's yeah, go it. ahead. Yeah, it's it's not too scary, so I oversold it, but so <laughs> you get the point. Um, okay. So this is off of Reddit. Um, I this is. I was gonna have one of you read it. Do one of you want to read this? Because this is from a woman. If not, I will read oh, it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have it open. Don't worry. I about could. It. I could do yeah, it. Yeah. Go ahead, Brooke. Brooke, you yeah, want to read I it? Pull up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it. Okay. All right. Go ahead and read it. <clears throat> I lived near Lincoln Park for several years. As you all probably heard, the southern end of the park used to be a graveyard. Some tombs and mausoleums are still there. But at a certain point, most graves were dug up and moved further north to around Irving Park, etc. There were once lots of disorganized graves, multi-person burials, plague deaths, Indian natives, and slave sites, among others. Anyhow, the area was always really swampy, and old wooden coffins pretty much disintegrated, which meant that bones and body parts were sometimes left and or couldn't be recovered. So after many rainy fall times, some older folks like to tell stories of walking their dogs in the park, and occasionally the dog might start pulling a bone out from the bush <laughs> or from wherever the mud got turned over. Naturally, Aww. I had I had to tell this history to any of my friends who had decided to walk in sandals or barefoot through the grass near the softball fields on colder rainy fall nights. Was that just a tree branch that poked your foot? Are you sure it wasn't an old finger bone? <laughs> better better take one more look at the moon. It's full this evening. Don't worry. It's probably nothing. Just check one more time. Oh, and for those of you who think it's just a myth, the most basic Google search will lead you down plenty of spooky pathways, such as this one citing research from Northwestern's folks who have estimated that out of 35,000 once interred at the Chicago City Cemetery, there could be as many as 12,000 wow. still there. Oh, yeah. wait, was that, was that part of her story or yours, John? I think I started reading your outline. No, 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 that was, no, no, no. That was part of hers. And I just oh, said okay. thoughts again. Gotcha. So again, you both, we all have dogs. Yeah. Imagine walking your dog and be like, what, what do you have? What's your dog's, the, the big, uh, not bruiser, Megan, what's your, I'm sorry, <laughs> mammoth? I've, what's I've got a big St. Bernard. His name's Moose. Yeah, and uh, Brooke, your dog's name. My my dog's name Gimli, and he's like fourteen pounds. All right, like a fraction of moose. (laughs) Opposite end of the spectrum here. Yeah, so I feel like they could gnaw a human bone together and have a little bonding moment. (laughs) Imagine them coming up to you and be like, "Hey, what do you have, Moose Gimli?" Oh, drop it. 
Drop it. It's like, eh, put it back. <laughs> And, and just, on, yeah. on top of it, like she said, you're wearing your sandals or maybe you're barefoot. And all of a sudden you're like, ow, what did I step on? Stupid branch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a skull. Oh, <laughs> that would be kind of like low key, kind of cool, though. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't move it, but I'd be like, that would be like a pretty cool discovery. <laughs> right. It would be. Yeah, it'd be crazy. <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much again. This has been such an awesome episode. I never thought I would find all this cool stuff. Um, so thanks, Brooke. Yeah, uh, really fun stories. List. Yeah. So, road trip? Oh, yeah. Yep. To the okay. spookiest zoo in the United States? I would yes, love to. Perhaps. You have to do an investigation down the road, right? Come on. Yes, absolutely. So, um, what do we got for next week? Can you top it, Megan? <laughs> oh, I'm going to try, John. I All also right. have some great stories. Um, this time we're in Wisconsin, but something interesting that I've been learning about is that since the late 1800s, people have been reporting sightings of kangaroos <laughs> in Wisconsin. Like I'm not, I'm completely not right. joking. And you just so me. you all know, kangaroos are not native to Wisconsin. <laughs> so how are they getting there? Are they real? Are they not? Because people keep seeing them, but you know, they're elusive, they're hard to find, or oftentimes they're never found. So what are what are these things? What's happening? So I'm gonna mm. tell a crazy story from the 70s um, in Waukesha, Wisconsin, where um, Ooh, nice. you know, people started seeing these kangaroos like all over the place, and people were like oh, putting together like it. hunting parties to go find them. It's it is a I'm so crazy, excited. crazy story. You'll have to tune in. <laughs> so I'm going off of your uh zoo theme, John. That is true. Awesome. And now that we've um offended all of our Aus- potential Australian listeners with our accents. Now we can talk about kangaroos. Come on, come back to us, Australia. <laughs> uh, I don't think your kangaroos are supposed to be here. Come get them. <laughs> yeah, come get them, please. They're all over the place. Make it a mess. Um, so we have a long weekend coming up, Memorial Day weekend. I want to tell a few people, if you're kind of sick and tired of hanging around relatives and stuff like mm. that, hey, turn on Dairyland Frights. <laughs> You can listen to a bunch of episodes. If you're sitting in the car and it's a four-hour trip and you're like, oh, my God, this is so boring. I can't stare out the window. So put on Dairyland Frights, right, ladies? Yeah, that's that sounds like a great solution. I know I do. Yeah. Great yeah. solution. On your and, way up you know, north to the family cabin. Yeah. <laughs> there you going go. Going out on the boat. <laughs> going on the boat. So remember, rate us five stars on Apple and Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. We're also on YouTube podcast. You can listen to us there. Um, and, and tell your ghosts we say hi. And if you're at the zoo, please, you know, tell them hi too. And don't let them kick you out of the women's restroom unless you're a woman. <laughs> um, have some fun. Yeah. So, and don't bury any bodies under a zoo, please. Stop yes. That. Yeah. Stop doing that. <laughs> All right. Especially so, not stay- twelve thousand bodies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so stay spooky. We love you all. Again, we will talk to you next week.